The following video is a presentation by Arnie Gunderson to the Nuclear Regulatory Commission's Petition Review Board. It concerns the safety of all 23 boiling water reactors in the United States. I'd like to now ask Mr. Gunderson to uh, make his statement, please. Good morning. This is Arnie Gunderson from Fairwinds. Gunderson has an E in it and Fairwinds has an E in it. I'd like to note that I'm honored to be following Dale Breidenbaugh, who's one of my personal heroes. I have four concerns about the boiling water reactors with the Mark I containment. My wife Maggie and I were walking in late February and she said, you know, we've found a lot of problems on nuclear plants around the U.S. What plant did I think would have most likely have an accident? And I responded, I didn't know which plant would have an accident, but I was certain it would be a General Electric Mark I boiling water reactor. Three weeks after our walk, Fukushima proved these statements to be correct. My first concern is the Mark I containment was too small when it was built. You know, I know you're aware of the Hanauer, <coughs> of the Hanauer memos that were written in 72 and expressed grave concerns regarding weaknesses in the pressure suppression containment. Several years later, I was personally involved in design studies for the BWR Mark III as the lead engineer on that improved reactor. As you know, the Mark III study showed that uplift forces on the torus of early Mark I containments would in fact have destroyed the containment <clears throat> if, an, if an accident had occurred. The world is lucky no accident did occur. In response, the first Band-Aid fix to the Mark I containment were large straps to hold the torus down against these uplift forces. In the 1980s, the likelihood of a hydrogen gas generation led to the installation of vents on the side of the Mark I containment to prevent the containment from overpressurization. These vents were the second Band-Aid fix applied to a design that was problematic from its, it, from its inception. Since the purpose of the containment is to contain radiation releases in the event of an accident, these vents have always seemed absurd to me because they allowed the release of radioactivity and also might not be able to be closed. At Fukushima, these, failed, these, these vents failed not once, not twice, but three times. The Mark I was built with significant design and engineering flaws. Two Band-Aid fixes applied in 76 and 89. And yet, the Mark I failed catastrophically three times in 2011. How then can the NRC ever consider allowing the Mark I to continue to operate? My second concern with the Mark I containment design is that the control rods enter through holes in the bottom of the reactor vessel. This, prevents, this presents a myriad of opportunities for melted core material to leak directly out of the reactor onto the containment floor. I believe this is exactly what occurred at Fukushima. The BWR reactor design is uniquely prone to melt through and it's built in a containment that's already inadequate to handle normal reactor forces. This was, this was outlined by the uh, Oak Ridge National Laboratory in 1989 in a report entitled Failure Modes of BWR Reactor Vessel Bottom Head. My third concern is that the NRC has allowed boiling water reactors to increase their power in a process called uprate. These uprates are much larger than similar power increases allowed in pressurized water reactors. And as part of the uprate process, many reactors have filed for exemption from federal regulations regarding net positive suction head, which is also commonly called containment overpressure credit. The NRC repeatedly allowed containment overpressure credit for these Mark I designs. And last October, the NRC staff informed the Advisory Committee on Reactor Safeguards that they assume there is zero probability that a containment system will leak. This decision allows the staff to ignore major safety regulation and give the industry a wa the waiver it wants. All three containment systems at Fukushima failed and continue to leak, thus proving the NRC is wrong. The NRC should immediately roll back 
the power of any reactor that has received a containment overpressurization credit. And finally, my fourth concern is that three reactor buildings were blown up and destroyed at Fukushima, thereby exposing fuel in the fuel pools directly to the atmosphere. Brookhaven National Laboratories released a 1997 report indicating that a fire in a boiling water reactor pool would kill at least 187,000 people. Fear of a fuel pool fire at Fukushima 4 was one of the main reasons the NRC recommended evacuation of U.S. personnel within 100 kilometers of Fukushima. According to Dr. Gordon Thompson, there's more cesium in the spent fuel pool of Pilgrim than was ever released by every above ground nuclear test ever conducted. The reactor building with its fuel pool more than 100 feet in the air is yet another poorly designed aspect of the Mark I design. For these four reasons, I believe there's no basis to allow the Mark I BWR to continue to operate. True wisdom means knowing when to modify something and knowing when to stop. Sometime all the king's horses and all the king's men shouldn't try to put Humpty Dumpty together again. Thank you for this opportunity to speak on the record. Thank you, Mr. Gunderson.